it'll be ready in one minute, and then we're all no set. No well, it, it's it's ready, it's just now it's a lag. Yes, it's a vast to my recent letter addressed and sent to each board member and to the Superintendent of Recreation, Kyle Berg, regarding the recreation budget and the non-funding of the sailing program at Lloyd Beach for the 2023 season. It really was disheartening to learn that sailing instruction for the youth of Winneka and beyond would not happen again in the summer of 2023. I can understand why there was no programming during the reconstruction of Lloyd, and the pandemic did take its toll. But I cannot understand why a community such as Winneka on beautiful Lake Michigan is not teaching our youth the basics of sailing and paddleboarding. After all, the community has a $5.2 million designated boating beach at Lloyd. I look at uh, Skokie Playfield, a swamp in the day, kind of swampy sometimes now, and look what we've done. And look how it is being operated. There's football, there's soccer, there's lacrosse, there's baseball, there's everything you can think of. So that piece of land is being operated. And I feel that Lloyd Beach has the same thing coming to them. Lloyd Beach has enjoyed a minimal use in the summer of 2022, in my opinion. The motorized boats that have storage at Lloyd maybe service 20 or 30 families. The other boats have a seasonal pass, or maybe they just bring their paddle boards to the beach a few times a year. The responses from Director Peterson state that the district is looking into partnerships with other sailing programs. 
I am familiar with these programs, and they would welcome Winneka residents. But that's not the point. Winneka's Lloyd Beach needs to be the catalyst of the sailing instructions on our home ground. Where will Lloyd Beach sailing, boating, and paddling be in 10 years if we do not teach our youth to learn the sport? We have the facility, a renovated $5 million project that we are proud of. The Winneka Park District has recently concentrated all their efforts toward the Elder Centennial proposal and is forgetting some of the very important business for our historic community. Please resurrect basic instruction taught by knowledgeable, certified sailors at Lloyd Beach and develop the sailing, paddling, boarding for our Winneka youth for the summer of 2023 and beyond. Thank you for your consideration. I don't know if everybody received the letter, the correspondence that I sent, but I did make copies tonight if I could go. Uh, she wanted me to hand them out or whatever. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Are there any other remarks from visitors? So uh, I'll turn this over Jim. quickly to Jim, but uh, to your point, Co uh, Commissioner Cotto, uh, the staff uh, continues to work hard on trying to put together the most complete and accurate uh, 2023 budget. Um, board members have participated, each uh, individually have participated in the LRP process. Uh, last, uh, the last board meetings, a big uh, chunk of board, uh, excuse me, of budget information, which was uh, quite a bit to, uh, to digest. And then tonight, it's a much shorter uh, presentation from Jim and, and the balance of the staff. But uh, rest assured, the staff will continue to refine and perfect and uh, make sure that we're 100% accurate in that 2023 budget. Um, uh, we believe we'll have more information for you to consider, but not look to vote on it on December 15th. We'll continue to look for um, elements of improvement. I know uh, Commissioner Rapp had asked to have some monies added to certain uh, projects of, of her and, and or the board's interest. So again, we'll move uh, to perfect the 2023 budget. Uh, we'll look for either January 12th or January 26th as a point where the board will approve the budget, which is well within our time frame. We have until the end of March uh, to actually get this approved. But um, just wanted to thank each of the board members and the staff members who have contributed to get to where we're at. So, Jim, thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> A couple of uh, points to, to build on uh, what Executive Director Peterson just said. Uh, we are sitting down tomorrow with our uh, health care broker to discuss health plans. Those numbers are not finalized yet. Um, NSSRA, one of the organizations we uh, collaborate with, also has not given us their final numbers. 
So uh, just as Commissioner Peterson said, this is still a work in progress, and we are trying to nail these down as, as accurately as possible so that when you do finally vote on it, you will be confident in the numbers that we are presenting to you. Right? So at that point, I'm going to dive right in here. Uh, the first fund we're looking at here is the Special Recreation Fund. Uh, this is largely our collaboration with NSSRA, but it is not exclusively our collaboration with NSSRA. This also deals with uh, ADA components at a lot of our parks and our recreation facilities. Um, negotiation is really their budget 
once that budget is finalized, then the distribution of costs go to the agencies. I'd also like to point out that the budget that NSSRA provides is an estimate of use. So if they don't use as much as they budget, we actually can carry a credit forward into the following year. So the monies that are there that are not spent can carry forward. So I want to clarify that point. Are there any other questions regarding the Special Recreation Fund? Okay, moving on. Uh, workers' account. Oh. Can you confirm that you were, were engaging with NSSRA regarding the ADA access issues at Centennial? And, and when you do engage with NSSRA, can we discuss whether or not capital can be allocated to those for that purpose from this uh, from this budget? I think Director Peterson. So, so we are working with NSSRA as it relates to the functionality of Elder Centennial, whether it's the uh, ramp down to uh, the bluff and to the beach, if you will, or the boardwalk at Centennial. Um, they're having a meaningful uh, input into how we can make that better. There are other uh, entities that we would certainly want to engage to make sure we get the best of the usability. The, the second answer to your question, um, we actually have the ability to use our own funds for anything that's greater than the normal spend to build out a, a sidewalk that is ADA compliant. Uh, if we had a sidewalk that was not ADA compliant, then we had to add additional uh, funds to make it ADA compliant. That comes out of our back pocket, not out of uh, NSSRAs. So the levy that we have actually helps us. Okay, understood. I was thinking more towards if there are gonna be special features to be incorporated to provide somebody the ability to get into the lake something like that. Is that something that NSSRA would help fund? I, 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 we could ask them, but I doubt it. You know, because each of the 13 agencies will have a unique, they don't build a reserve to um, fund any of the agencies and their development of ADA uh, capabilities. If you did, you'd have 13 different agencies. Ask them the answer. Them, but I'll, I'll ask them. Moving on to the Workers' Compensation Fund, Fund 3200. Uh, our 2023, pro oh, this is working now. Here we go. Our 2023 projected workers' compensation costs are going down by about $1,667 to roughly 2.5%. Uh, as you'll see here also, uh, we didn't receive the revenue we expected uh, from, through the Cook County delay. So our ending reserves in 2022 are significantly below what they should be. However, once again, we'll get three payments, the second half of 22 plus two payments in 2023, which should restore the reserves by the end of 2023 to the 25% threshold we're supposed to be. Are there any questions regarding workers' compensation? Okay. Moving on. Uh, fund 3300, IMRF and FICA. Uh, IMRF is the retirement fund, the uh, um, fund into which both the Park District and the employees contribute uh, for uh, pension, pension funds. Um, the employer rate for 2023, sorry, forgot I had the clicker, thanks Kyle. Uh, the, the employer rate for 2023 will be 8.25%, which is below, it's about 20% below what 2022's rate was, which was 10.4. So that's very good news for us. Uh, it, it's less that the park district will be contributing um, to, to, to the fund. So that, that is very good news for us. The FICA budget is based on salaries for the entire district. Uh, this is taxes we pay to the federal and to the state governments. Uh, those numbers are going up because salaries are going up. Uh, so I'll show you the numbers here. So once again, uh, the revenue was below what was expected because of the Cook County tax delay. The three payments that we get, again, second half of 22 plus two payments for 23, should restore the ending reserves uh, by the end of 2023. Uh, our operating expenses are going up because uh, wages and salaries are going up. Uh, inflationary pressure is driving that number higher. 
Um, so uh, we expect to have uh, our reserves restored by the end of 2023. Uh, any questions on 533? I think the board on December 15th should vote to approve a temporary um, violation of the 25% minimum reserve threshold because the policy says that we're supposed to have a minimum of 25 due to tax receipt delay. It looks like potentially when we close the books on 22, we're not going to have the 25% there. So I think we should all be prepared on December 15th just to vote to approve a temporary uh, violation to be restored the following year. And a temporary waiver is a very good idea. Uh, again, depending on when we get that money from Cook County and allocate it back to 22, the money might be there by the time we close the books. Right. But in case it is not, having that waiver in place is, is, a, is a, a good proactive step to take. All right, are there any uh, questions regarding uh, IMRF and FICA? Okay, moving on. Uh, next is the audit fund, fund 3400. This is very straightforward. This is simply the money we allocate for uh, our annual audit with Lauder Rock and Amy. We are in the second year of a three-year contract for audit services, and the costs will remain level with prior years. So uh, this, again, is about as straightforward as it gets. Are there any questions regarding our audit fund? Right. Moving on to fund 3500, liability insurance. Uh, our property insurance will increase by about a little over $5,000, about a 6% increase. Uh, general liability will increase uh, a little over $2,100, a 5.75% increase. Uh, and our, our overall insurance costs through Moderna will go up uh, about 3.5%. So, once again, you'll see the revenue will be short because of the Cook County tax delay. It's a recurring theme in these uh, presentations. Um, so we've budgeted for the second half of 22 and all 23 to once again restore the ending reserves in this fund. Uh, are there any questions regarding liability insurance? Yes, Mickey. Fund 36, uh, debt service. All right, this accounts for the outstanding debt service on the 2014 GEO bonds. Um, other debt services issues that we have are paid out of uh, corporate and tennis. The $3 million wind trust uh, certificate that was approved at the last meeting will be paid out of corporate funds and will not be paid out of this fund, just to, to clarify. Right, so, uh, you'll see, uh, once again, this fund short because of the, the tax delay. Um, the expenses went up about $16,000 uh, based on the amortization schedule. Um, but once again, the three payments, the 22 and then the two and 23, will uh, more than offset that. And we should have the remaining reserves back where they belong at the end of 2023 for this debt service fund. Well, one thing, we can't have a negative Correct. And again, once we, depending on the timing of Cook County, we'll factor into that. But yes, I'm keeping my eye on that very closely. All right, that's the end of these funds. Are there any questions regarding the uh, debt service fund? All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Uh, moving on to item number 4.2, Elder and Centennial. We have Costa. Two items. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as
as it's shown on the agenda, two topics that came up in discussion as we move forward with design plans, especially as it relates to Centennial Park, is how to properly secure the dog park as it was motioned on the 27th to move forward for 2023. The board in the board packet, there are two um, lists of requirements or guidelines that are required by either the Cook County Animal Control Ordinance adopted in January 1 of 2010 or the uh, requirements from our own liability uh, insurer, uh, Derma, for a fenced in dog exercise area. Those, uh, those items were included in your packet. Staff had worked with the um, worked with Jim to include those items in the proposed budget for capitals for the 3,700 account to take that in consideration. We're going to be looking to use some of the information that's already been done via the dog committee for tower, repurpose some of those efforts and reuse those design methods that Lakota had put together and then bring that forward to Centennial and then bring back to this board our design plans for that in the form of a proposal that then would be voted upon for installation once we land on a permit design for our Centennial Park. That is forthcoming. The RFQ is going to be released on Monday for the request for qualifications for a coastal engineer. We'll bring them up to speed once that firm is selected and the board adopts the uh, negotiations through that. Then we'll be able to run in stride with this on parallel paths for the required elements for Cook County as well as the required elements from our own insurance provider. Are there any questions on this front? Do we currently have a B5 plan under the animal control ordinance? I thought we did. Uh, we certainly have seen to a bit here. That's page 26 of Cook County's animal control says that every uh, institution has to have a B, it is called a B5 plan. I would have to look into that to confirm. Um, I'm sure we have it as a matter of record back in, I believe it was 1995 when they went online, uh, but we'd have to look back into that to see where that is currently as it exists today. And maybe update it. Correct. Thank you. This is the middle package we need for this. Do we go for permit for this fence? Do we have to go for permits for this fence? And if so, or what are the submittals? Thank you. The submittals for this would be internal. Uh, there wouldn't be permits required. Uh, the jurisdiction from the village ends and terminates at the bluff edge to the start, uh, at the toe of the bluff. Um, so this would be on the front side. And anything we put, including for permits, would then go within our permit for the actual build out of the coastal program through IDNR. Uh, so, actually, I misspoke there for a second. That would be included with our coastal plans for the IDNR for our permit as it relates to IDNR and Army Corps to construct that. We will make sure that we take a look at the ability to traverse the dog park south of the boundaries of what that's been identified in the motion and make sure that we can do so in a safe manner. So this is our required meeting over Christmas break. I've already read it. So, yeah. so yeah, for, for the audience, we wanted to include this as part of the body of knowledge that we're addressing as we go forward with the design. Know that there was a chain link fence out there at the north end. It was obliterated during the high water period. So factor in the survivability of whatever we do uh, into the design going forward. Correct. Not only the survivability, but also the ability to erect and make sure that stays permanent in place, correct? Thank you, Costa. Uh, item 4.3 is also Costa. Thank you. Uh, if I can ask, um, Thank you, Kyle. As it was noted, um, I believe our Commissioner Rapp had brought it to our attention that the permit was filed for our neighbor to the south, as it's known here from the IDNR, for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, 
uh, water re resources permit notification for the 205 Sugar Mill property. Um, one second, let me get my notes for that. I have received the submittal, or in this case, the public notice uh, by mail. It was, uh, it was in my inbox, I opened it the next morning. Uh, and in review of that submittal, which has been included in the packet and distributed to all port board members previously, is the proposed design from AECOM for the 205 residents. The current plan, as it reads from north to south, does include the installation of a breakwater system. The breakwater to this north is a 125-foot road mount structure that includes some water infiltration piping for stormwater discharge in the base of it, along with an elevation of 591 tapering to a lakeside elevation of 587. As you move south, there is a boat ramp that's indicated, a uh, wired, or wired mesh boat ramp that's been identified. Further, as you move south, you'll see the current steel groin that's on the southern edge is encapsulated with a groin to the north, which then is going to be backfilled with stone, include a water discharge pipe for, once again, stormwater, and then capped with concrete at an ele elevation of 591. Off of there, there was an existing stone structure. I believe that stone structure was 65. Bear with me. Uh, existing 70 foot long stone groin to the south, which they're extending another 35 feet lakeward, and then extending that to the north. Backfill for the site, the sand elevation tapering from the toe of the bluff, it's 587 into the lake. The approximate cubic yard fill is about 2,300 or so cubic yards of sand that are going to be brought in to nourish the beach as well as overfill per the requirements. There was concerns that were brought up from commissioners as far as the park district's take on this. And at this time, I would like to open it up to the commissioners for any comments or discussions in regards to the current plans as they're proposed by 205 Sheridan Road. First, thank you, Costa, for including all the dog park details. That was helpful. I did, I wasn't joking, I did actually read it. I read everything to a pretty low level of detail, so it was not a waste of time. I appreciate it. Um, question on the permit application. I observed that on Tuesday evening, and I don't know when it was done, that there was a corrected full version of the permit put up online. And I'm just wondering if the Park District received a complete corrected version because it was, I believe, it should have corrected the address of the village of Winnetka confusion because I saw the Park District was noticed. But I, the, the addresses were blanked out. So I just wanted to confirm that we are now receiving this as we should and that you had looked at the complete permit pack because online in the in our board packet there is an abbreviated um, the mail notices are abbreviated whereas online it has the complete detailed permit application materials. Uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I was in respect of the paper copy that was mailed to the Park District. Uh, I wasn't aware that the online copy was different from that, so I will research that tomorrow, and we'll get that uh, updated. Okay. I also just wanted to note that the Park District did The uh, updated one has extended the comment period through January 2nd. We'll make note of that. We also will follow back with the park board uh, if there's any individual comments or concerns that we need to reach. Colleen? Hey. It's on. It's on. Um, by email, looking the date of November 20th, I submitted uh, some su suggested 
comments to Mr. Peterson and to you. I guess my question is, uh, does the district intend to move forward and submit written comments? The current plan is abutting an existing steel structure that extends beyond the limits of the 125 as proposed in the um, AECOM for Orchard uh, Revertible Trust. The current design would have no significant impact to the park district from a coastal piece, from my, my layman's term revert, uh, review of that. Um, but that's where I think it would behoove the park district to reach out to the coastal expert, whether we retain the uh, long-lasting relationship with should Beacon Associates to review that and discuss it in greater detail, or unfortunately that would go beyond the time limit, we could reach out to another firm. But currently the steel that is shown existing to re remain, the height elevations definitely would be a concern that we'd want to talk through. I know in your note you had suggested the discharge of the water, I believe you had indicated black water in there. This is neither nor black or gray water, this is storm water for the residents, which was brought in front of the uh, regulatory agencies previously, and they had no issues with a direct discharge for residents for storm water. So we can further those comments uh, in greater capacity from the board's perspective on how they would like to move forward with this. Uh, I, th I received a call today from a constituent who had been on the phone with Soren Hall. Soren is uh, now, I guess, a director at the Army Corps. He, he is still, though, reviewing this application. And he said that he was unaware that the Winnebago Park District was, was intending any construction at Centennial uh, Beach at this point. I think at a minimum, it would be very helpful for someone at the district to reach out in writing to Soren and to send perhaps the proposed drawing for Centennial 6. Because it, it just my, my thought that if we are moving forward with a um, southern breakwater, there may not be the need for so much stone to be put in the lake. Uh, just, just a question, but I would, I would highly recommend that someone reach out to Mr. Hall and make him aware of this. And then uh, my other, <laughs> my other questions were really safety based. Um, there appears to be a very large dock uh, for motorized boats. If we are going to have dog swimming, we need to look at that and and see if we have any safety concerns. That's a question. For and, and with also swimmers, so thank you. Sure, no problem, thank you. Um, I also sent an email to John and I guess CC Warren and you, Coast I, I think it's our duty as a public body uh, to make comments. Um, again, I, um, again, you know, potential public safe, safety issue with boat rent, don't know. Okay, uh, potential water quality issues due to these substantial outfall pipes, again, don't know. Um, further clarification on this native vegetation area and the full application, I didn't see any pictures. I don't know what it is. Um, there are some comments about it. And this uh, potential limiting of passage due to the passage at 579, I, I don't know if that's too low. Um, um, uh, so I, I strongly believe, uh, I guess I said to John, I would strongly suggest during public comment period that the Winneka Park District sent a letter to the Army Corps at ENR on order for 2020 application with the following potential items concerns. So uh, I think we have a duty to, to send something to the IDNR Army Corps. One, one final comment. Um, Mr. Weaver with AECOM, he was the fellow that did the overtopping study call in the past, is, is a, uh, talking about this native vegetation, quote, native vegetation area will be elevated to protect against wave damage. The question here is, are we looking at planter pockets? You will recall that our constituents seem to have two main concerns. One, the ability for Lakeshore Vista, and then two, uh, that vegetation not block Lakeshore Vista. So, 
I would think at a minimum we needed to explore this further and find out what we're talking about that this elevated to protect against wave damage. Thank you. So, to uh, get the board input, how would you like the response to be formulated? We have an individual one from David. Thank you, from uh, Colleen Root. Uh, you, you know, asked a bit about it, but um, how would the board like this to be advanced? Sure. I wanted to offer a couple of comments on this. There is an ongoing dialogue. Christine and I have had negotiating you know, two different negotiating sessions with Orchard, and this particular design is immediately adjacent to other designs that we had previously <coughs> submitted. I believe it was back in August, and we had elder options one through six. So, centennial options one through six, thank you for clarification. So, I look at this as uh, something of a placeholder, assuming that there is no further discussion or agreement. It could be piece of, part of, but I look forward to January 21st design session when we can have more full discussion, is I don't foresee this being constructed anytime immediately. I do want to comment on the stormwater discharge. I had some internal discussion. Uh, it is my understanding, those of you correct me if I'm wrong, that a property that is nationally tributary to Lake Michigan is permitted to discharge its stormwater, or overland runoff, into Lake Michigan and that a direct discharge is less desirable than a filtered discharge, which is proposed here. So what I see on the plan, uh, I would consider that best management practices is to take stormwater and it allows it to percolate through a sand filter rather than just discharging it directly into the lake. So I actually like seeing that. We had tried to do that the original designs for Elder, but the volume of water and the depth of the discharge such that we couldn't do a bioswim. So I think that's a positive thing. I think uh, the height is something that we've discussed, uh, and, and yet uh, I still look forward to trying to collaborate on a design that would serve both purposes, both, both parties, because we are neighbors. My recommendation is the written comments be prepared and submitted with these issues. <coughs> Uh, I don't know how you further define these elevated beds, how you can uh, secure additional um, information, but I would encourage you to do so, because I suspect that what we're looking here is at the planter pockets that we heard so much about this summer, and um, the, the concern is planting a public beach, that that is something that uh, you know I would think we might want to comment on. Uh, I'm happy to work with you on language if that would be helpful to you. you know, whatever I can do to help post up, I'm willing to do that. So just reach out to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. And based on the comments and questions that I've heard, I'll put together a Cliff Notes version on the parts that have been identified, what's been brought forward, anything that I see, and then redistribute that to the park board, and we can distill down from there. Okay, we, we're going to send a comment in. We have our last board meeting on the 15th of December. Comment period by this January 2, we won't have another board meeting, so I think we're going to have to vote to approve our comments. Is that fair to say? So we have to agree uh, by December 15th, or we have to have something that comes to the floor to vote to approve to send in. So it's my understanding we will review our comments before we submit them, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Good night. Um, I just have one other quick comment. In the revised permit, um, it's appeared that there were some changes in the latitude and longitude, which I believe might have been incorrect. So I do think also when you're looking at it, just making sure that the base information is correct. I don't have a way to know if I see the change, but I feel like just making sure that we believe that is like the factual miracle locational things are accurate would be helpful. 
we'll go through dot i's cross t's and make sure that what is prepared and distributed to the park board is that the most inf most time stamped you know latest information that we can get and we'll get that out to the park board early next week so we can deliberate on that and have that turned around for the 15th In addition to contacting Soren Hall, may I make a recommendation that you reach out to John Rogner, who's the one of the deputy directors of the IDNR. Mr. Rogner has been particularly interested in uh, the planter pocket issue, um, and and also um, this is, this this whole issue that we had so much public controversy on for Lakeshore. Vista and, and access, and I think um, I think it would be very good for us to let us let him know um, that that we are looking at this and and uh, have have some some comments to provide. Um, he he actually asked that we do that if um, if we move forward with anything on Centennial or if our neighbors did. So thank you. restricted in nature uh, from the Winneka, Wom Winneka Women's Club. Uh, the first donation is for $100,000 uh, to support uh, maintenance and related costs to the Dwyer Park gazebo. Uh, the terms have been included in the packet. Uh, the second donation is a restricted donation for support of uh, effectively fences along the Green Bay Trail. So uh, both of those need to be uh, voted on by the Park District Commissioners and our December 15th meeting. Uh, so we're just remarkably grateful for the Winneka Women's Club and their recognition of some ways in which they can invest in the Winneka Park District in a manner that's commensurate with effectively some of their missions. Uh, so it's, uh, we're just humbled by their thoughtfulness. But any questions that uh, any of you have regarding their proposed donations? Okay, so we'll put them up for a vote on the 15th, and then we'll get signatures. Uh, the Winneka Parks Foundation is participating as well, so the donations will go into and through uh, the Parks Foundation over to the Park District, and then Jim will restrict the dollars uh, accordingly. So, uh, thank you. Uh, so that's, uh, that was our second donation, so it's all good. Why don't we just keep going? Half a road. So, um, I believe it was uh, in uh, November, I want to say it was on the 21st, but I don't have the email in front of me. Uh, I gave a summary of what has happened uh, since in October um, Chamber of Commerce annual breakfast meeting where I first learned about the Hap Road corridor project. Uh, subsequent to that, um, Warren James was able to participate in just learning more about the Hap Road uh, corridor project. And given his uh, command of the uh, the elements at hand, I thought it'd be best, uh, Warren, if you want to just talk a bit about what it's about and what we're being asked to do. Thanks, Jen. We have the exhibits up. Would you like the slide deck? Yeah, I, I can speak to it if it's not unique. I, I, it's easy to put it up, just which one would you like, in order or? Please. So included in your packet, you'll find this half road corridor study that was prepared by the village of Northfield. If you want to click through the slides, you can see it runs from uh, Willow down to Winnetka. It's a comprehensive plan, how it impacts us. It's with respect to the half road park frontage. We're introducing a roundabout. Uh, that's probably the most significant element. That does not concern us. That's the village of Northfield. And, uh, Cook County. We're 
does concern us is the entrance to the park. There we go, Half Road Park. You'll see they're introducing a cross section, pedestrian or pedestrian crosswalk, which should improve safe access. They're also enlarging the pathway along the west side with eight foot wide multi-purpose path. Seven foot wide multi-purpose path. And that again will provide greater access, safer access to the park. You just skip to the next one. Next. Next, next, next attachment. Next attachment. This is more technical in nature. It's showing the various easements, either permanent or temporary, which are required to facilitate the plan. And the next document has a little more detail on how it impacts the park. This is a blow up of a prior exhibit to show a green shaded area. It's 502 square feet. What they're asking of us is a temporary construction easement to allow construction. This is about as innocuous as it gets. 502 square feet is an average two car garage in, in total area. You can see it's a thin strip that they just need for construction purposes. They will be um, in the process removing and replacing uh, the existing fence there as part of this construction project. So they need our consent and they otherwise handle the rest of it. There are, there are some other uh, procedures that they're going to go through to properly document the entire process. We just, and they've been very, very uh, forthright with the communication and the process by which they're addressing it. Two quick ads to uh, Warren. First, I think it dovetails with our first plan, right, to work in a collaborative manner with other governmental entities. And, you know, this is part of our uh, Winneka Park District boundary, right? We do have a significant number of taxpayers in Northfield, as well as a couple of other villages. But uh, it is one of the entities for which we should be, or with which we should be collaborative. Uh, number two, uh, the project construction work is expected to take place, although timelines can be what they can be. Uh, right now, 2024, our long-range plan will suggest um, some uh, work to be done at Hap Road Park. So the timing may be perfect for uh, the, the work at Hap Road Park to dovetail with the Hap Road Corridor Project. If we're going to do work uh, at the same time that nobody can really access our park, that might be the right time to do that work. So uh, again, that's budget dependent, uh, commissioner approval dependent, et cetera, but another feature to consider. So uh, just a heads up on, you know, the staff recommends that we continue to provide support to this project. More information will come our way. We're just, we're just getting started, but I wanted to make sure it's on everybody's radar screen. So thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, we've already dealt with remarks from visitors early in the session. John, would you like to address matters with the director? Sure. One real quick. Uh, uh, so, uh, Commissioner Rue was uh, terrific. She had identified that um, the IEPD certification um, in um, our last meeting, she had said that uh, the IEPD certification had expired in 2017. It's a distinguished accredited agency uh, recognition. So uh, we're still on good standing with the IAPD, thankfully, uh, but the project uh, that Commissioner Root referenced is a distinguished accredited agency process. It's relatively arduous. I will say that the staff would go through a manner or a, map, a process similar to the budget, if you will, maybe greater. Um, but um, happy to provide to the commissioners uh, the information associated with the overall process, but it's a it's a pretty big lift. Uh, I'm not saying that the staff wouldn't be willing to do it, but in conjunction with all the other uh, work streams that we have going on, uh, just want to make sure that uh, we give it some level of thought, thanks to Commissioner Root bringing it up, um, and then take it from there. Are there any benefits? Putting forth all this work, what would 
be the benefits of this distinguished accreditation from the IAPD. We gain anything from it other than we get to put like a blue sticker on the front door of the one at the Park District? Uh, in our audience tonight, we have two former commissioners who could speak at length about the benefits. And I want to thank uh, one of those commissioners, uh, Mary, who brought this to my attention. What I have learned is little, but uh, what I understand, no, I, I didn't mean to, to articulate it that way. What I understand is that this district has, in past years, always had the certification. And that the benefit, well, you, you have the history sitting in your audience today. The benefit, as I understand it, is that there are volunteers that come from other park districts, and also the, the, the IAPD itself, and it's rather like a, an audit, where they come in and they look at your, uh, yeah, count, uh, Steve, you can speak to this. They, they look at uh, just uh, all of your areas, and they make suggestions for improvement, and they, you also have the opportunity to learn and grow through, through the comments of other districts. So I'd like to receive additional information uh, and, and then as a board we can decide what we want to do. I think it sounds, oh I'm sorry. I was just gonna echo what Colleen said. I think it's a great program. It does provide a lot of benefits to the district in the form of confirmation about their policies, their procedures, their um, practices in all regards. So whether we're talking about financial, employment, um, property, uh, insurance, every every aspect of the operation administratively and also including RAC and, and um, parks and, and properties. It's very valuable to get, um, to see what the agency has established, IAPD has established as, you know, best practice criteria in, in the industry. So it gives, it gives the district a a roadmap to um, develop, you know, a higher degree of competency in all of those areas. But it is a heavy lift. I will say it takes time, and if you if you are, uh, you know, understaffed and overburdened, it might not be the right time to do it. But I agree with Commissioner Root that now would be a good time to get information on it and to plan for when it might make sense to proceed. Steve, I just have one question. How does it overlap? with the strategic planning process, because they sound very similar. Maybe you can speak to that. I think, you know, this is more like Colleen described it, it's, a, it's an audit. It's what are you doing right, what's your personnel policy say right now, and when was the last time it was updated? What does your, uh, you know, what's, in, what's your financial policies consist of? And when were they last reviewed by legal and by your board? You know, so it's, it's, it's about compliance and just checking in to make sure that you're your procedures and practices are up to date. So how that relates to your strategic plan, there's overlap, I'm sure, but it's you know very specific with the distinguished agency. It's like you gotta have a lot of different boxes to check. So we didn't have that recognition from 1999 to 2003, uh, recertified from 04 to 09, and uh, most recently uh, recognized from 2012 to 2017. And that was information provided directly by IAPD. So that's where we've been. So it, it has been consistent uh, all the way through, but it is a, a great uh, track record, so to speak. Um, there are quite a number of benefits to the agencies and or to the staff. Um, so you'll see that in the paperwork distributed. I think Steve brings up the point of, we have to prioritize you know, what the limited staff that we currently have. We have a strategic plan. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rapp has asked us to go out for a uh, community-wide survey. I mean, there are a number of blocks of work that have been asked of the staff uh, that we would need more uh, prioritization because we cannot do it all. And uh, where we invest our time, happy to, to invest it. It's just where. Um, so I'll get to each of the commissioners the uh, distinguished accreditation information and the program so that you see it. Um, I just wanted to respond to Commissioner Rapp's mention of it from our prior meeting. So, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Rood, sorry. Sorry about that, Colleen. Um, Steve, I just wanted to
The only one that I have is that Nutrier is uh, planning to seek the maximum uh, tax levy for 2022. That would be the 5% um, amount. The inflation is 7, um, but they are capped as are we at 5%, so they will be, their plan is that they announced um, in their November 14th meeting that they would be seeking the maximum 5%. Well, I'm not the official board of ESI. I have had communication with Emily Rose, president of D36, regarding the Crow Island improvements, and in addition, to more specifically, the first grade playground encroachment into the Crow Island woods area. They are preparing additional documentation, and that will be brought to our attention that will be rolled up and resolved and addressed as a part of the overall uh, co-op including plan. So one other uh, item that came to mind. So uh, Costa, um, Kyle Burr, and uh, Matt Johnson and I were scheduled to be with uh, Kemper Sports. So that meeting took place. Uh, Costa, to his credit, was not able to make it because he's working on the stormwater project. Uh, you know, again, a representation of a lot of work streams uh, all at once. But we did have some discussions with uh, Kemper Sports today regarding uh, some of the benefits that they can bring and the, the efficiencies or the, the power of their spend, and we're now part of that. So Matt was front and center uh, on you know, different uh, types of equipment and or supplies that uh, they're able to provide at a better, a better program because of their volume and purchasing capability. So uh, they're representatives will want to provide an update uh, on the 15th of December. Um, so they want to present to the board. They won't have a full budget um, you know, insight. There are some moving parts, personnel, and, and the like that are still in process. But they just want to give us an update on the 15th of December. So you'll see that on our agenda. Perfect. Thank you. Staff reports. Heard a lot from Costa. Heard quite a bit from Jim. Anything in addition? Okay. Anya? Okay. Kyle? As we're fully in the holiday season, we have a number of events that are quickly coming up on the calendar. Tomorrow uh, will be the tree lighting at Dwyer Park. It's a great collaboration with the Village of Winnetka, the Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Park District. Uh, I encourage everyone to come out. The, the temperature should be warmer than uh, I encourage everyone to come out. The, the temperature should be a little warmer to, tomorrow night and uh, the sound quality should be excellent uh, <laughs> while the next event. Uh, this weekend, uh, Sunday is the Red Tag Sale. On Saturday, we have the Winter Carnival that will be located at Skokie School. A couple of uh, different features to that event. And then we're preparing for gingerbread decorating as well as uh, the Winter Express uh, uh, display of the Polar Express movie uh, that'll be happening in the golf parking lot, uh, drive-in movie uh, style, which will be uh, a great event. Uh, we are wrapped up on our fall programming as far as our outdoor sports. Uh, with the temperatures uh, not quite shifted into the snow, we still have a number of field requests coming in, which is a great problem to have. Uh, we're just looking to find spaces to put uh, various organizations, baseball still going strong. Uh, and then we are getting ready for winter camp that will happen over winter break uh, between uh, the Christmas holiday and New Year's holiday and then the following week after New Year's. Uh, so a lot of things uh, happening for recreation, albeit at a little slower pace. I have a question, Kyle, may not be for you, maybe to JP and I will apologize if I should already know the answer to this question. But as you drive by Hubbard Woods Park, and there's a beautiful Christmas-looking monument that is there that says Winneka, is that the park district or is it the village? Okay. Do I comment, Kyle? 
So that, that's another example of collaboration. Um, it is, uh, or it was, I believe at this point the, the letters have been taken down. Uh, it was driven by the village. Uh, Liz Deschamps with uh, the village did a phenomenal job, incredibly creative. Uh, but it was a, a joint operation, parks and maintenance, uh, assisted with installing the letters as well as the large uh, uh, ornaments uh, that are now located at AC Nielsen. Uh, and then it was Public Works that did the lighting, uh, so a lot of, a lot of uh, hands working in that project. It was very well received by the community.